This was an interesting video because I really lost my cool with face of y'all. I know how I talk about how important it is to be calm, cool, and collected while presenting atheist presuppositional apologetics, and you all should not do what I did here. This was my mistake, and I have to live with it, right? Our fathers of presuppositional apologetics, Bonson and Van Til, were very clear that we have to engage with our interlocutors, with compassion. And I definitely did not show enough compassion here, especially with the intellectual level that I was dealing with of the interlocutor in this conversation. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you and enjoy the video. <clears throat> Do we have any scumbags in here that want to defend their scumbaggery or their solipsistic nihilism or our deterministic agnosticism or anything like that? I don't, but I thought that um, little throat clear first was very lovely. Yeah, yeah, and no, I am quite sweet in a way, you know. It's rock and roll, you know, we know when like back the other way as well, you know what I mean? So the scumbags, are, they're not in a defensive mode right now then. Great. Glad we all agree. Where do they grow them? <clears throat> Uh, Lil. Yeah, face. Lil. Why do Lil. you reject the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic atheistic reality that's been revealed to all of sound mind through both natural and special revelation? Yeah, it's because the way that you attempt to know that is through the sciences, and sciences are provisional. Uh, they're tentative and they do not deal with truth. So you could never know the conclusions are true by the sciences and therefore you don't know anything well, you know, in regards to that proposition. That's why. So you're saying that you're just barring our base naturalistic presuppositions that I exist and the universe exists and minds exist within this universe, including our own mind. And then you borrow things like space time and gravity and physics and quantum physics, and you label it the uniformity of nature and add incoherencies, but you also presuppose a God that you know doesn't exist, which is why you have to presuppose it, but that adds more incoherencies to your position and your worldview. And this begins to obfuscate everything outside the local scale for you. So you continue further down the line, borrowing things from our worldview, and then adding on incoherent things from your incoherent position that obfuscate things further. And now you've arrived at a point where you try to reject induction entirely because you've obfuscated everything outside of local scale. Everything. Yeah, like just just so you know, and like I, you know, I'm act, I'm actually slightly agnostic on this, right? But like most of the Christians, and like genuinely, most of the Christians think that you are a Christian because you're like this, you know, you're such a, like a funny, poor example of like an atheist that people just think that you're a Christian and you're laughing, trying to discredit atheism and stuff like that, you know. So let me elucidate to you the truth that you already know, but I need just one moment. So I'll be right back. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't believe it at first. I actually thought there's no way. I just, I just thought Taco was just a dumb atheist. But in a sense, and I don't mean that as a put down. He's a nice guy. He's cool. He's not, you know, he's not stupid, but it's just not like a great debater. But like, um, yeah, I am starting to wonder, you know what? Maybe he is Christian. Maybe he is like, like literally a Christian and he likes to have a laugh, likes to make fun of atheism. So he just comes online Sorry, as the most ridiculous. So you already yeah. know the truth, as I'm going to demonstrate with the watchmaker analogy. Now, you may be saying these nonsensical things now, but after I walk you through the watchmaker analogy and elucidate the truth to you, you will know the truth even further. So you begin walking along a beach, right? And you see the sand and you see the water. Now, what is sand made of, face? I think it's like sil silica or silica or something like that, I think. Correct. It's quartz, but what, close enough, right? But with that being said, you know the natural processes that this forms through, right? 
Um, no, to be honest, I'm actually a little bit agnostic on that because if you ask one, you know, one field of science, they'll say, well, sand comes from sandstone. But if you ask them where the sandstone comes from, they say, well, it's compressed sand. So there actually is a chicken and egg problem in regards to that, unless you just say from the Big Bang, which is highly ambiguous, you know. Okay, so I don't think anybody says that sand comes from sandstone. They say well, that sandstone is made of sand. But regardless, Wait, well, yeah, okay. If it's silica, then you know it's ground up seashells and stones and shit like that. Probably. I mean, I'm not an expert, so, but if you say so, I mean. You know. And so, based off of that, I'm assuming that you know what erosion is. Yeah, yeah, it's when things erode. Yeah, yeah, it's like the you know. What is the water made of? Uh, I think it's H2O or something, hydrogen and oxygen. I think. That's correct. Do you know how water forms? Not exactly. I mean, I guess there's some kind of chemical process from the Big Bang at some point. Something happens. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you've probably seen the videos where they do the do it in a lab with a balloon and they like light it on fire and water falls or something like that. I think that's what happens. But something like that. Yeah. But you're right. It's chemical processes, right? And then the water probably got there through other natural processes, right? Uh, rain. Uh, Maybe some of it comes from the earth, that whatever, right? But the point is, it's all natural processes where that water comes from, right? Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Well, do you have an example of water coming from nothing, Face? No, no. But, well, maybe the Big Bang. But, like, um, <laughs> like the, I'm not making the claim. You're saying that, you know, no, it's no, no, natural. No, no. I'm just I'm asking you, like, your what, you know, how do you That's know why that? I'm asking you right and yet. That's why I'm asking you these questions. Because I'm simply going off of the knowledge that you already have, right? Um, I don't know infallibly and emphatically that, um, you know, water is natural. I mean, if you just mean not godism, I don't know that that's true, you know. But it seems to be the case, based off of 100% of your experience, that water forms naturally through natural processes, as does sand from pre-existing stuff, correct? Does natural mean that there's no supernatural god tinkering behind the scenes? Yeah, like there's no God doing anything uh, when when sand's getting eroded, right? The sand's just getting eroded. How do we know that? Processes. How do we know that God isn't the necessary background information for erosion simplicity, uh, you know, at all? You know, like. Well, we're not even there yet. We're still at the. We're within the processes that are happening, right? So, like, you don't see a God like pushing the rock along the bottom of the ocean to erode it, right? That's not happening, yeah. right? It's not like rubbing the rock on the bottom mm -hmm. of the ocean, is it, in your worldview? No. But I don't see the fish on the bottom of the ocean, but they're still there, you know? That's not analogous. So the question I asked <laughs> you that you said no to was, do you see God rubbing the rocks on the bottom of the ocean to cause no. the sand to form? And you said no to that. No. So. You agree with the natural processes, even if you're trying to obfuscate now. Now that we'll go to follow. the next step. So no, that doesn't follow. I don't care. But what if God was invisible? What yeah, if he was invisible? I, I, then you wouldn't see. I'm not engaging with this nonsense. So you continue walking along the beach, but you see in the sand a round silver object about the size of your palm with what looks to be like a leather strap along it, uh, along the bottom of it. And it might have some marks or something on it. What do you think this is? Uh, solipsism. What do you think the object in the sand is? I suppose it would depend on the shape of it. Yeah, it's like a round metal, metallic, silverish object with oh, like a like leather a strap on it. Yeah, like a coin or a bottle top or something. I don't About know. About the size of your palm. Or a buckle. buckle a buckle. A coin. Okay, okay perfect. So everything you mentioned there was a created object right and the, the the point of this analogy is that and you just elucidated it to yourself without even realizing it is that every that, that even in an analogy it's self-evident to you the difference between something that's natural and something that's created right and so no well you just demonstrated it even if you say no so that doesn't matter um, so anyways, you go and you pick up this watch and you look at this watch. Now, Face, do you know how a watch is made? Not precisely, but I guess they put a bunch of parts together in an intricate way so it keeps time or something. I don't know. Yeah. So with a watch, 
they're going into the mine and they're getting some metal. They're raising a cow and they're cutting up the cow and using the leather for the strap. And then they're probably getting some plastic and they're assembling all the parts. The cow, the rocks that they dug into to pull out the metal, the plastic, all this is stuff that's been formed through natural processes and then created into something else at some point. And so this, with this, we can extract two things. So the created category that we have access to, that's 100% of your experience is entirely temporal. Everything, 100% of things that you've ever seen that are created are temporal. They come from pre-existing stuff made by a mind that exists within space-time. All this is within space-time and it's stuff coming from stuff. The created thing, once again, is stuff coming from stuff temporally made by a mind that exists within space-time as a part of a human or animal body. 100% of stuff. Now, there might be like second-gen AI creators or what, but that comes from us, right? And so everything you see on the creator and created end is temporal stuff coming from stuff, right? I mean, well, no, I rejected that about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So do you have one example of a non-temporal creation or stuff not coming from stuff? Um, I don't know. Not precisely, no. But okay, it wouldn't follow so, just because I can't give an example that yeah, yeah, yeah that would just be it, argument it, it, from it science. Does, it does, it does, because then you would just be claiming no. black swan fallacy, and I'm saying you have to provide an example to address a black swan fallacy. I, I mean, you can't conclude the contrary of something just because you can't prove the, no, no, no. you know, this is an say if I can't prove the negation or the argument, affirmative, not, I can't just... I, I'm going, I'm going into know. an inductive argument, not a deductive argument. I'm not trying to prove mm. any certainty because... Nobody could do that for any position. What I'm trying to prove to okay. you is a likelihood based off of your own experience. Well, all of the atheists right, are so I put Okay, so it's in the side chat, but do you agree, face of Yah, which you kind of already did agree to, but everything that is observed to exist arises from pre-existing stuff? Um, the first, th the first thing probably wouldn't have arisen from pre-existing stuff. Seeing we're not stuff even, we're sort not of seems there. to be more of like we're not even there. This That's is just, about your experience. Yeah. Everything that is observed to exist arises from pre-existing stuff, right? Uh, yeah, seemingly something like that. Do you agree that the universe exists? Uh, yeah. So, do you agree that therefore the universe arose from pre-existing stuff? No. Okay. So what is your, uh, why? So, so that would seemingly, it, it's, it, a, it's it, an inductive yeah, argument, so you can reject the conclusion. conclusion, right? You can, you can reject the conclusion, but I'm going to ask you for the justification to reject the conclusion, given you've accepted premise one and premise two. Yeah, so, but, how can you, it's wait, but how can you reject the conclusion if you agree with the premises? Because it doesn't follow it. a fallacious argument. It's because it's a fallacious argument. Because you well, went from it, an inductive... It, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not fallacious. It's a strong inductive argument. It's amplitive. So yeah, it's going from fantasy. it's going from this instance of space-time to the prior uh, instance of the stuff that existed, right? And so you saying it's fallacious is not doing anything. What you would need to do is provide a reason to reject the argument, right? The actual conclusion, because you've accepted both yeah. premise one and premise two. So you would need to provide like, uh, basically, yeah. so, so the, I, I don't even know a good reason you could reject the conclusion. Like you would have to reject right. premise one and then provide an example of something that's come from nothing. Otherwise your position is just- No, no the conclusion nonsense. doesn't actually follow. In an inductive argument, conclusions do not necessarily follow. Do you not understand that? This is an inductive oh. argument. I'm asking you for your justification as to rejecting the conclusion. I'm saying this is no, likely. Way, this no. is not certainly the case. This is an inductive argument you. face of y'all. No. No, bro. Just right. I understand that you're using induction to fill in the parameters of the argument, but the way that the argument's being given, the conclusion, the way it's concluding, is as if it's a deductive argument. I'm saying so with that's the gonna have to be okay, okay. So let me clarify any confusion. So the conclusion is likely as this is an inductive argument. So regardless of the words that are being presented in the argument, 
It is not presenting a certainty. This is saying that this is likely the case. It's not. It's not actually saying that grammatically or anything like. You'd have to that modify it to not make matter. it say that. I'm but, telling I mean, look, you. I can't interact with. As <laughs> the person presenting the argument, this is an inductive argument. Add the yeah, word I'm saying it's, "likely" it's not written correctly. in your brain. It's not written correctly. That's what I'm saying. Like you, yeah, yeah. Just you have to modify. Add, it, add in that it's likely, and then I'll look at the argument again. But add, add that in, just so so it's well. Clear. That would be redundant because it's inductive. No, but I'm saying the way that you worded it, it's actually formulated I'm as a deductive. I'm telling you, it's an inductive argument. argument face of yaw. That means it's likely, yeah. which means that that would be redundant to put the word likely in the conclusion. What are you not understanding? I don't think you understand the difference between induction here and deduction. I just don't what is the difference between induction and deduction face of yaw? Why don't you educate me? Yeah, so induction is not going to necessarily follow and deduction will, but the way you've written this is if it necessarily follows that the I'm universe can complete I'm telling you it's <laughs> induction and that induction means it's likely. And so if I put the word likely in the conclusion, that's redundant because I've already told you it's an inductive argument. Now address uh, bro, like, the argument that's being presented to you and stop talking about the words because it does not matter when I talk to you and explain to you that this is an inductive argument and not a deductive argument, face of y'all. So if I just say yeah. this is a deductive argument, which it's not, what, would you accept the conclusion? Bro, it's formulated. You formulate it as a deductive argument, and you're claiming it's inductive so, so, because the premise okay, is filled okay, in so with inductive. So it's deductive. So, mm. so you accept the conclusion? No, because it doesn't follow. That's why well, I'm asking it, you to it modify. It would follow if it's deductive, because if it was deductive, it wouldn't be talking about this local and sub sub space time going amplitively into the prior state of the universe. If it was deductive, it would be talking about the universe as a whole going into the universe as a whole coming from pre-existing stuff and it wouldn't be ampletive it's two different arguments you fucking dingleberry i'm presenting the fucking yeah. inductive form if i present the induct the deductive form you've already accepted it there's no point in doing that though because you already accept the deductive form i'm trying to get you from this local instance of space time to the prior representation of the universe do you want me to write it out for you? Shall I just write no, it out? No, I can put likely in there. I'm not it. going to. You're going to engage with me when I'm having a conversation with you. I'm telling you this is an inductive argument. Put the word likely. The universe likely arose from pre-existing stuff. In your brain, if you have to do that, I don't give a fuck. This is an inductive argument. I'm telling you the conclusion is likely, and I'm asking you for your justification in rejecting the conclusion. Well... I mean, my justification is the way you formulated it. It's it's incoherent. It doesn't follow. So unless you modify it, I'm not so going to respond to So add the it. word likely to the conclusion. I don't care. The word likely is automatically there in an inductive argument because an inductive argument is automatically probabilistic. Yeah, I've given my response. You know. Yeah, you said you could formulate it. Formulate it. If you want to change, change it. But have... Okay, I'll, I'll change it for you. Okay. okay. First, I'll put it with. A, I'll put a valid inference rule behind it, which you don't have. Okay, so we're going to make it's it a modus ponens. Fucking time. inductive! Oh and, my uh, god, what the fuck is wrong with you? Here, I'll just put the word likely in there because you're fucking retarded. Holy shit! How the fuck are you? No, this you put... face of y'all. Listen to me. You are fucking stupid. How are? You? Because if you're not in that fit state of mind to respect what little customers you have, you shouldn't be fucking in here. Okay. Period. That's cooked. Yes, it is. We ate this today. The meat is stinking. Like, um, mo if we put it into modus ponens, and then because right, that's a valid inference the, rule, no, then no, no, it no. It's an inductive argument. It has no validity. It is not valid. No inductive argument is going to be valid. It doesn't need to be in fucking modus ponens form, you fucking idiot. Read the fucking argument. I put the word likely in there because you're fucking... Yeah, I mean, look, if it's if it's not got validity, then the argument cannot it's follow. It's an inductive okay, argument, so this would just be you fucking idiot. How yeah. fucking stupid are you? It's a fucking I'm... inductive argument. What is your re reason for rejecting the fucking conclusion? It, well, the, originally it's because it didn't follow. It's not going to follow, you fucking idiot. It's amplitude. It is going from this local instance of space-time to the prior instance of whatever. 
This is an ampletive argument. It will not be valid. The conclusion will not follow. You have to provide, though, a reason as to reject the conclusion as it still does colloquially follow. It is a strong inductive argument. So is this is this the argument? Basically, look, it's like if I repaste it like that, is that what you're saying? I don't need you to repaste it. I already repasted it with the word likely because you're too fucking to understand what the word inductive means. Yeah. I like, look, does having a valid inference rule behind this um, ruin its validity in any way? There is no opinion? validity. It's an inductive argument. An inductive argument cannot be valid. You fuck. What don't you understand? I'm saying I don't think you can go ahead and give an inductive argument and a expect me to take that seriously. An inductive you know? argument is not a valid argument, you fucking idiot. All of science is done off of induction. Can what I'm telling you, you fucking, down, is that this is an sir, inductive argument down, with a premise one and premise two that you accept and a conclusion that colloquially, not technically, follows because that's how an inductive argument works. So, face of y'all, I'm asking you, what is your reason for rejecting, accepting premise one and premise two, but rejecting the conclusion? It's basically because the way you worded it, it didn't follow. And like, for it, okay, in order for I it to follow, the it word. has to have now a valid the, Address the argument worded, how you have to have it worded to understand it, because you don't know what the word induction means. I mean, I take, my, if you talk talking about induction as like, uh, in a justificatory sense, it's more like just sort of reasoning from oh the, God, you know, like a specific... Done. Yeah. All right, Why I, I'm going to wait so for you to remember, provide right? justification phase because at this point, you're just lying to the room. So you provide your justification for rejecting the conclusion. I'll wait. Okay, I'll, I'll look at it again because right, I hadn't really, I was having a coffee, but I'll have a look. Hold on. I mean, if you're, I mean, if you say that like inductive arguments have no validity, then the Kalam cosmological argument is invalid. I hope you know that. But that's okay. I when did I say that? That's what Taco was saying. I didn't say that. He said that inductive arguments, if they're not, if they don't have validity, then it doesn't go through. That's what you said. And for an argument to to, um, what do you call it? For it to follow, it has to have a valid inference rule in which it follows. For deductive arguments, but this is inductive. No, I dude, you can use valid inferences with um with a inductive argument. Dude, just look, <laughs> inductive argument just means that it doesn't are, are you necessitate serious right now, Faze? Are, Dude, is this, is this do, a real response do, Faze, that you're giving? Faze, all you have to do is just look up, can our inductive arguments valid? And everything will turn up, no, they're either strong or weak inductive arguments. That's all you have to do. I don't understand this. Uh, okay. Like, okay. like here, so, inductive arguments, also known as reasoning by induction, are not judged as valid or invalid, but rather as strong or weak. Um, what is an inductive argument? Are assessed as strong or weak, rather as val than as valid or invalid? From Stanford, the terms valid and invalid cannot be applied to inductive arguments. I don't, I don't get it. You could look this up. It's free. Look what uh, Mole's writing in the chat. He thinks hey, that look, the like, view hey, that mind evolves is the view that non-mind equals mind. How stupid is this person? Oh, then God no. equals human, then. Therefore, it's a contradiction. God damn. No, Jeff, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that um, intelligibility is prior to the, the hey, life on Hang on, on hang Earth, on. Bro. We're having a conversation right now with Faze trying to help him understand induction. Yeah, so okay, I'll face, do you understand? Yeah, so, face, do you understand that inductive arguments are not judged as valid or invalid, but rather as strong or weak? Do you understand that now? I mean, if you say so, if that's, I mean, you know, I okay. maybe. I, okay, and I, you also I understand. Sure, I mean, well, if you say that, so, my... yeah, and you would also understand that if we were to reject all invalid argu all all uh, inductive arguments and say that they are invalid that you couldn't use the kalam cosmological argument right i'm not saying that i'm not saying that that's not my position at all i think that's what taco was saying no that's what you were saying was that because it's not valid or invalid you judge it as invalid because it doesn't have a valid inference rule but that's a category error i'm i'm saying i'm saying i'm saying no, I mean, for something to follow, for, an, for a conclusion to follow, it would follow an inference. 
it would follow from an inference. You, in you a, conclude in a, via in an inference. a deductive argument. You put that into a deductive form. You've concluded no, 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 by no, no, a premise. No, 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 I'm telling exactly, you. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think you know what you're I don't think you know if you're Instead using Instead of induction or deduction. me, go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and look up inductive arguments and then go under the behavioral section where it talks about having a conversation with people. And when you're having a conversation with people, you should be engaging with the best form of their argument. In addition, if they present to you an argument and they tell you it's inductive or deductive, you need to operate from that ground because that's how you engage in philosophical discourse. It's under the behavioral section underneath inductive arguments uh, or uh, it might be under inductive and deductive. It's under one of those two pages, right? But there's a behavioral section about right. presenting arguments and having these philosophical conversations, and you are not engaging in good faith because I've been very clear. I even added the word likely to the conclusion in my statement when I was stating it. I even took the time to add the word likely to the argument that I've been telling you is inductive, so adding the word likely would be redundant. So why do you reject the conclusion? How, how, you how, how, how many times have I said it, Brian? You said because it's not valid, right? And that would, as Neon clearly stated, that's a category error. So why do you reject the conclusion? Yeah, that would be like saying um, that, like, I, can't. I mean, as a matter of a, uh, as a matter of induction, you're, you're, as a matter of induction, you believe that, you know, your computer has connected to a discord server, right? Now that's an inductive premise. So any conclusion that you draw from an inductive press from an inductive premise, like you are talking to someone on discord, um, you wouldn't apply validity there, but you wouldn't reject the conclusion that you're talking to someone on discord. This is not how that works. So why do you reject it? What do you why mean do you by conclusion there? What does conclude? Well, what do you mean? Well, like what do you mean by argument? conclusion in that sentence? You don't know what I, you don't know. Right. And an argument is. is what? Is that? You don't know what a conclusion is? I take a conclusion. I have defined it already. I already defined okay. it. Okay. So wait, Taco, did he define it? Yeah. What I'll, I'll do it again. Is? Yeah. A conclusion. A conclusion. A conclusion is that which follows from premises and a valid inference rule. Well, no, that's in a deductive okay, so argument. Then. Inductive art. So, so you're using a deductive conclusion. So you should specify a deductive conclusion. Yeah. So face of y'all, do you do you understand yes or no? That's why I take a conclusion do to you, be simplicit. Do do you take? I don't. Okay. Adding the words. I don't know. I don't know what you think simpliciter means. I don't think you understand what that means because that's not how you use it. I, don't I just think mean. That, I mean. I'm. I without adding, that, so without I, at this point, I have to ask. I mean, I just insist, full stop. I, I just mean insist, full stop, bro. Without adding I extra have to insist, I have to insist on asking you at this point. Do you understand that validity cannot be applied to inductive arguments? Do you understand that now? Um, I mean, not. I don't see it explicit, but let's go through it. Let's go through it. Okay, so. Like, like, I'll tell you my understanding. My understanding is if something is necessarily true. If you have, if you have true, I can break it. That's how I'm using it. Look, if you have true premises and you conclude via, via a valid inference rule, then you have a deductive conclusion via a deductive argumentation with a valid inference rule. If your conclusion is going to be like possibly the case, then it's, infer then it's um, inductive. That's just how I'm using it. But I, you can still use a valid inference rule to conclude with a possibility or a probability, bro. You don't, you don't have to be incoherent just because you're using induction. Okay, so this is this is the issue. Do you think that if I Do use with that sugar, first. if I use sugar in a cake, that cake is going to be sweet, right? Can you... Depends on the amount, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, it depends on the amount. If I use like a given amount of sugar for a given amount of cake, it'll be sweet, right? <laughs> But that's like yeah, if you use enough next, to make it sweet, like said, it will be sweet. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. If I if I use a sweetener, it'll be sweet. I right? give it an amount of sweetener, it'll be sweet. Uh, and if I don't use that, it won't be sweet. Right. But both of those are inductive premises because it's just based on like your experience of eating cake and baking, right? Because I could also throw in a bunch of cayenne pepper 
into the cake batter. And it doesn't matter what I do, it won't be sweet anymore, right? So that's an inductive premise. But we don't use the notion of validity when it comes to inductive premises. So it would still follow, I suppose, that if I use a given amount of sugar, then the cake will be sweet. And if I don't, then it won't, right? But it's not based on infallible premises. It's based on fallible premises. I could have spilled into, I could have mixed up salt with flour, you know? So, I mean, look, so like, look, the way I'm using it is yeah. like this. Like, um, but I'll just copy. Yeah. Well, but if I just copy and paste from, I don't know, the IEP or whatever, this is how I'm using it. This is literally how I'm using the thing. May, could I be confused? It's possible. Like, you know, I'm not perfect, but this is kind of the way I'm using it. Yeah. So, and I'm lagging, so, so it'll take a moment to have, jump in there. Like, Yeah, so everything we have, everything that exists, it came from something else. Everything we've observed, everything. The phone that you're using, the the materials used to build your house, it all came from pre-existing stuff. Based on quite a weak inductive case. Well, based on a weak inductive case because we only see a very limited, well, no, no, no. A it's, very it's limited a strong, amount of reality. It's, it's We're based on zero percent of all a, things. It's a strong inductive case because it's one hundred percent of your experience. It's undeniable. You don't have one example of the opposite. So that would be but it's zero. Strong, that would be a strong inductive argument. It's zero percent. It's zero percent of the set of all things. It's zero percent of the set of all things. So the chances that it's truth tracking on zero percent is extremely low. What What are you talking about? We're saying that a hundred percent of your experience is stuff coming from stuff. You don't have one example of something coming from nothing. Therefore, the only conclusion that you can make right. is Some that stuff have comes no from experience. stuff. So I'm asking you, since one hundred percent of your experience is stuff coming from stuff, it seems to be likely the case that. That stuff came from other stuff. So what is your the reason that you're rejecting that conclusion? Because you seem to be accepting both premises. I mean, look, if, if you're just saying, um, what do you call it? Like, if, if things are likely to come from other things, then they're likely to come from other things. That's fine, if that's all you're saying. Oh, so he accepts it. Welcome to atheism, If that's brother. all you're saying, it's, it's that's a very mundane thing. Yep, it is very mundane. That's why it's a strong inductive argument. Welcome to atheism. It's, no, it's not. No, because it's just a tautology. It's so, like it's so just like saying like if a donkey called, was a rabbit. This is the reverse kalam. This is the malak, as it's affectionately called, and this is an anti-creator argument. And so, accepting this argument, you've now inherently discounted any creator position in your own worldview. Congratulations. Welcome yeah, to man. atheism, brother. Yeah, I mean, look, all we're saying is if X, then Y, but that doesn't prove X. What's the argument for the first part, the conditional? Yeah, no, there's no more conversation that you, welcome to atheism, brother. So if everything comes from something and you're saying that God, and this is an anti-creator argument, and that's kind of where it goes, right? So if God is something, right, is God made of energy, face of Yah? Um. I mean, I, I wouldn't really say he's made, but like he he has like Does potential God within, and if energy, energy. Is defined, if you're defining energy as potential, the then yeah, I suppose in the sense Does, all does God have the ability to do work? Yeah, yeah. So God would be dependent and therefore contingent, because it would necessarily be dependent upon the universal quantum field, which is the necessary being. All energy would necessarily depend and derive. Doesn't upon matter. the I'm universal not, quantum field through. so all energy would necessarily depend and derive upon the universal quantum field because it yeah is and what the is a quantum field being. we don't know what that is can you explain what that is for us please yeah i can it's okay. it's where it's just the most fundamental state right it's like the <laughs> state outside of matter right it's it's going to be a more fundamental state of the energy right the quantum field would be like whatever that most fundamental state is without those uh excitations right so there's like the there's like the field and then the particles are going to be excitations of that field right and so uh i, I don't know how to describe this much more simple than that right so there's like the substrate the the fundamental substrate the field the matter and whatnot is excitations of that field right i mean if you know this via like inductive sciences then you actually can't know that 
the, the field is there because all science is a tentative and provisional in nature and they're just models with predictive power at best and though, even those predictions if they come true you you're just conflating um like uh, like cause with the uh, you know the what you what you're seeing you know you would never know what's actually causing the phenomena you're just, this is you're just assuming an argument that it's from incredulity you're just no, saying no, no, I this can't is a assume it would be the other way. Just study the philosophy of science, bro. That's a no, legitimate I, that, like, that has critique. nothing to do with you this. Don't you're you're trying about. to you don't know what you're, you're saying about, problem of induction, you can't know anything. If you think the problem of induction is true, get the fuck off your cell phone, you fucking solipsist. Stop talking to yourself and go fucking go be by yourself in your room because that's what you're doing, you fucking solipsist. You're fucking sitting in your room right now talking to people over the phone because you're saying that induction isn't justified and you're using induction to say that you're talking to people. So what you are is you're stuck in your fucking brain, you fucking solipsist. So go and leave this channel and go do something else because until you're going to get through the problem of induction, you can't get through solipsism. Yeah, I mean, bro, if you feel like that's a you're meaningful a response, don't talk to me. Did, you're I, mean, a you I don't care, solipsist. Go away. Okay, well, you know. Go away, I, so I, I don't care. Say, I, I'm not yeah. talking to a solipsist. Go the fuck away. He's running. He's running. Uh... I mean, I'll wait a few minutes just in case you want to answer the question. I don't know. I'm not talking to a fucking solipsist. Go the fuck away. Get wrecked, nerd. Got fucking dominated, dude. Absolutely dominated. <laughs>